right, following on from our previous video on testing the diesel heater on filtered, only filtered, uh, waste engine oil, we are now today doing a mix, a 50-50 mix of filtered waste engine oil and diesel, and a little tiny drop of petrol just to, just to see what happens, I mean we're talking like out of two litres of the mix, so it's like maybe a hundred millilitres of petrol, so and we know in the previous purely uh, waste oil mix it ended up with this, can you even see in there, yeah, that mess in there, uh, yeah that, that's what happened on purely waste engine oil, it clogged up the heater. So in the background it's starting up on the 50-50 mix of waste and diesel, it's uh, lighting in the background as we speak, and once it's lit we will start the tuning process using the uh, gas analyzer. Let me just start the screen recorder and fire up the afterburner's controls just now, it's running, so let's see it's... Igniting. It is igniting, splendid. Now body temperature's coming up, good, so it is lit, that's, that's a good start. What we want as well is the gas analyzer. Right, let's just start it. Obviously, the, again, the start readings are all, always wrong. Well, not wrong, but they're way off because it's just starting out. It's still relatively cold, so it's not combusting properly. So we'll hopefully see that start to come down as it starts to heat up. Hopefully. I'd like to start to see it come down now. There we go. We're getting better combustion now, so that'll drop away. And once the glow plug goes out, ignited. Like Heating that, heat exchanger. It'll now start ramping up and firing in more fuel, more air, and get it up and hot. Okay, I've managed to get the carbon monoxide into the high 40s, low 50s. It's not great, but it's not terrible, and the Body temperatures fluctuating around the 120, which for a two kilowatt here, it's not, it's not terrible. Plus, as I say, it's cold in here, so it's actually it's still circulating cold air. Uh, I'll need to shut the door and then have it. Well, hopefully, warm the whole place up would be nice. But right, that's where we're going to leave it just now. I'm going to let it run. Hopefully, this time until it runs out of fuel and doesn't flame out this time. But again got the afterburner app and the MQTT so I can check it from in the house, at work, wherever I am, make sure it's still going. But that is where we will leave it for today and we'll come back once it's hopefully running fuel and not just flamed out. Right, I'll see you then. Okay, well that was it running on a mixture of 50-50 oil and diesel and it has flamed out because it has run out of fuel, which is my fault because it only ran one and a half litres through because I've managed to get the pickup. I've, I've hooked over one of these holes and it's not actually sitting down to the very bottom of the uh, fuel. And I looked in there and it's basically just dangly touching the very top of the diesel. So what's happened is it's just sucked air and whatever's left in the pipe is just stuff that's ran back down from when it flamed out. But that's good news. Good news is it kept running until it ran out of fuel, which is what we wanted. So I'm going to take it apart now and show you what the inside of the burn chamber looks like. Right, I've got all the screws out. Let us now extract the burn chamber. Get the fuel pipe around that. Thank you. So inside, ooh, okay. Different, I'll give it, it's different. We'll start with this bit. It's a bit more ashy inside. Not as wet looking, shall we say, not as black carbon, but a little bit more white, that concrete looking bit. And as for the burn chamber, so this one is, well, it's still clogged. I mean, it was still running, obviously, when it stopped, when it was running when it stopped, yeah, that's exactly how it works. And it's still got a, a build-up of deposit on the inside. Not as much on the you know, the outer rim, outer rim, 
but it's got a bit of spattering as well but to be fair that might have just been from welding but inside it definitely has uh, so I don't know how much longer that would have actually run before it stopped so I think for the second part of this experiment so because I've got two burn chambers left what I would like to do so, being as this has run out of fuel, rather than getting clogged and stopping, what I'll do is, put this burn chamber back in exactly as it is, tip the fuel up and get the standpipe sitting in the rest of the fuel, and we'll just run it again and see if it runs till it runs out of fuel, or runs till it clogs up the inside of in there. That's what we'll do. That seems a fairer test. We'll run it till it either runs out or it clogs that one up again. So I'll put all this back together, start it running again, and then I'll come back once it's either clogged up or has run out of fuel. Okay, it's another day and good news, the uh, heater has flamed out and it's flamed out because it has absolutely run out of fuel again, which is good. It's not clogged up, it's managed to run itself out of fuel. Splendid. So, for the next part of my experiment, we're going to leave that burn chamber in the heater just now. And due to us having access to such a wide variety of very clever people out there, lots of different people watch your channels, one of them happens to be, for the profession, the tune thing, well, the tune uh, fuel burning heaters, be it industrial, etc, etc, uh, for a living. So I asked them for some numbers for perhaps burning waste oil and I have those numbers uh, not on this phone on my other phone so I'm going to look at them and then set up the you know the gas analyzer outside and we'll come back in and then we will tune it to what will hopefully be a much better burn and then we'll like half fill this tank full of a petrol not petrol, diesel oil mix, and then we're just going to let it run, and I'll come back hopefully again once it's either flamed out or has run out of fuel. Okay, so I put my, or I refilled the tank, or put four litres of the uh, waste oil diesel mix, and tried to relight the heater on the same burn chamber we used previously, that had gone through two, three, four, four litres, four litres of the waste oil petrol mix previously but it will not relight, which means it's clogged up to a point where it, it kept going burning, but it now won't stay alight. So it's shutting down, and um, we're gonna take the burn chamber apart now and have a look at it. I imagine it's uh, an oily, sludgy mess now that it's had a flame out, but we'll take it apart and then swap it for another burn chamber, and we'll run the experiment again with the hotter temperatures. Uh, so, according to numbers the nice gentleman sent me, I'm aiming for 5% oxygen and if I can get less than 100 parts per million of carbon, carbon monoxide, I'm doing well. So, I'm going to swap this over and I'll show you what the uh, burn chamber looks like inside. Right, I need to put my gloves on because it's still hot. Let's take out the burn chamber. Little bash in there, not terrible. And again, it's just a bit clogged up. You see in there, let me get you over the camera. Just, uh, yep, it's just full of crud, basically. Kind of basically what we expect to see, and much the same as the first one. Not quite as much crud, but definitely some crud. And in there, there's a bit of, a bit of ash to be seen. And you see down in there. It's not terrible, not terrible at all. But we will now put a new burn chamber in from the packet, rebuild it and set her going again. Right, I'll bring you back once we are fully operational. Right, we are operational. The afterburn is running, the heater is running and running away quite happily. We've got the DC 710 outside, stuffed up the exhaust. And now we're gonna look at some numbers. Right, as I said, the gentleman said we want less than 5% oxygen, so we've got 7.3% there just now, and we've got 61 parts per million of carbon monoxide. Now, the afterburner not, is, is uh, reporting a body temperature of 135 degrees, 
We're currently running at 4.2 hertz. So let's take that up a little bit. Let's do tuning. Let's take it from 4.5 to uh, 4.2 to 4.5. Let's apply that. Set it to maximum demand. Maximum demand is 4.3. Okay. So let's uh, give that a few seconds for it to do its thing. Right, O2 is coming down. PPM's coming up. PPM went up a lot. Flow error. A blockage. I'll be back. The filter was indeed clogged. Clogged. Right, so that's a lot of carbon monoxide for a relatively small increase. So let's change it back. Let's make that again. 4.2. See if that gets better or worse. It's going down. I mean, it went down a lot. I mean, can we go? Can we, will we go midway then? Will we put it to 4.3? Three. The other three. And then once it settles itself out. Okay, let's. Guess, let's, let's, let's hold it there then. 6.5% O2 and 120 to 30 uh, parts per million and a body temperature of 144 degrees, which is lovely and hot. Perfect. So we will now leave that to run until it either runs out of fuel or it clogs up. Hopefully, fingers crossed, it will run out of fuel rather than clog up. Hopefully that should be just nice. Right, okay, we'll come back once it's done its thing. Right, we have once again flamed out because we've run out of fuel and not run out of burn, you know what I mean? It's not stopped because it's clogged, it's stopped because it's run out of fuel. So let's take this burn chamber apart and see what it looks like. Well, that doesn't look great either. That looks like a horrible sludgy burnt mess. Uh, it might be also a little bit oily wet because I squeezed the fuel line when I was taking the fuel off but I'm not sure that would account for the amount of wetness that is in there. As always, the atomizer screen always looks really nice on them. If you can see down there, it's still, it's still nice and clean. There's no, it's not bad in there, it's always in there. That's the worst bit. Same as inside the actual heat exchanger itself, it's a, a little bit ashy. It's not, it's not terrible. And there's okay, but that's not the bit that clogs the heater up. And there's a fair, a fair amount of ash in there. I wonder if you would hit that with a hammer from outside, it would knock off and then you could juggle it along until it falls out the exhaust. But let me empty that out. A little pile. I mean, it's not it's not terrible. But the uh, the um, burn chamber is not is not pretty. That is definitely. I'd be surprised if that started up again on itself. Right. So that's three burn chambers. So that's uh, this one is fifty fifty and a tuned burn for maximum temperature output at the point just before it crosses into going stratospheric carbon monoxide. This one is 50-50, uh, running at a normal amount of carbon monoxide output, you know, like a, 
a th or maybe a 30 to a 40 because I couldn't actually get it to go any less than that. And the first one, that's running just pure, plain filtered engine oil and it's crusty and crubby, grub, grubby. But yeah, none of them are particularly great. So it looks like it's one of those things that if you start it running, it'll run, it'll run until it clogs up. But if you're running it and then stop it, it's unlikely to start again with the state of the burn like that once it's cooled down. Now, I'm going to leave that for this video because that's as we've seen it 50 50 filtered, it works and it just clogs up slower than if you were just using plain, unfiltered, undiluted uh, waste oil. So, yeah, again, I uh, don't recommend using it. It's also pretty illegal in most countries. Thankfully, here in Mexico, we're okay. There's no such uh, enforcement as that. Uh, any questions, comments, anything like that, please leave them down below and I'll try my very best to answer them. As always, thanks for watching.